Gird your loins. Compete Radio starts now. Putting the dis in dysfunction. Here's the most diverse panel of talk show hosts in the world with your host, Josh Fourier. Sports News with Buddy Early. Alfonso Chavez with Sports Pop. Your resident straight lady, Connie Wardman. And the conservative voice, Eric Carlisle. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Josh Fourier, here with Alfonso Chavez, Buddy Early, Connie Wardman, and, of course, Eric Carlisle. Um, this past week, this past Wednesday, it was Oprah's last show after 25 years. Can you believe she's been on the air that I'm long? I'm kind of wishing I had ever watched it at least once. Yes, I can <laughs> believe that she's been on for that many years. I don't believe you, Buddy. You had to have seen Oprah. Come on. You know, it's... It's been a long, long time. I'm sh- I mean, obviously, I'm sure I have. I don't think I've ever watched a full episode of it. I watch Rolanda Watts I've instead. <laughs> <laughs> My brother used to call her Okra, like, and it wasn't oh, even a mistake. Dear. It was when we were kids, but oh, he used okay. to say it on purpose. I used to call her Oprah Winnie. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. Um, so that that kind of that kind of screws up my next question, which was, what is our most memorable moment that we can remember from the Oprah show? Well, no, actually, you know what? It's funny that you bring this up because uh, the Monday and Tuesday episodes of this week they had pre-taped at the United Center in Chicago, and I actually taped those because I'm very curious. And so there were just all you know one celebrity surprise after another coming out to greet Oprah. Were you and there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> in spirit, and the crowd yeah. would just go insane. Yeah. For anybody who came out. For anybody, I mean Dakota Fanning, they would, you know, their Dakota heads would Fanning? explode. You name it. Okay. It was very interesting. You you want to know what's funny is I have this friend that would always talk about how he missed early Oprah. Yeah. How you would see he would always say that you would see some some lady on there where Oprah's asking her questions and she'd just look really tight lipped and kind of arrogant the the guest and yeah. they'd be like I'm not going to talk about it and then Oprah would be like We'll be right back. <laughs> and, no, 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 no. Well, well was, and here's the thing. You come back, and she'd be like, and then he wanted me to go to his house, so I went with him. You know, she'd manage to get it out of him over the break. Buddy, the signature of Oprah was always back in a moment. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So this is, a, this is also a big deal for us today. It's, you know, this past week was Oprah's last show, but this is the first episode of our third season of Compete Radio. Wow. Now, is that incredible? Or what? Did we have a... It is, actually. <laughs> it's like that year. It's like seven in one year. Nobody, yeah, not for the reasons our listeners might think. Nobody's come to throw us out. Did we have a cliffhanger from the last episode? Because we should have done that. We had a cliff bar. <laughs> Oh, that that was tasty. You're right. You know, like the cliffhangers, like when toes are hanging off of an open <laughs> heel shoe. Like that. well, yours are always at the uh, table here. You're but they make his legs look so good. So you know, why not? I'm gonna bring a sand. Why not that shrimp cocktail? You know. <laughs> so what else has happened this week? Anything exciting with Dancing with the Stars or Ooh, any well, other craziness? I, I, you know what? I I taped the last episode, so I I still haven't watched it. So don't tell me. Even though I've never watched the show until like this last week, the finals. So and I still haven't watched it. I've been avoiding hearing everything. So I watched the the show, The Voice. Give to me your leather. Take from me my lace. Wow. I think I'm gonna throw up. Oh, okay. Well, so I enough mean, about reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is this is not The Voice. Um, so a lot of people it seems like everyone from you know sports authorities to CNN anchors are coming out of the closet. I'm sure we're going to talk about that a little more in the show. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but what is that all about? Is it is is 2011 the year of coming out, or or what is? Yes, I think it really is a huge wave, and it the timing is right for people to say I'm going to be who I am. My lasagna came out of the oven last night. It was amazing. Eric, you I don't want to know what uh, that means, but I think once one person does there it, I mean, test or it just keep, the ball gets rolling, and people are like, it hey, does. look. I can do this, and it's no big deal. They don't but want to not, be, no pun intended, left behind. It's not like a hobby. It's not something that you you know do for fun. It's not it's not a cult. No, but it's more safe now than it's ever been, and I think that's the great thing is that people can come out without fear of being attacked and killed. This is that beautiful new music. All right. Well, we have it's season three, don't you know? Sports news with Buddy Early. Be sure to log on to CompeteRadio.com. News information, hot topics, and more. 
Now, sports news in under three minutes with Buddy Early. I'm Buddy Early, and this is a Compete Sports News Brief. After a wild weekend of play, the NCAA Women's Softball Tournament has been pared down from 64 teams to 16. Best of three Super Regionals are taking place this weekend, and as expected, the Pac-10 is leading the charge, with 16 having a chance to advance to the Women's College World Series. In fact, three conferences are dominating. The Big 12 has five teams still alive, and the SEC has four. The only other conference represented is Conference USA, which has this year's Cinderella, the University of Houston, remaining in the field. The Super Regionals are shaping up this way. Number one overall seed and odds-on favorite Arizona State hosts Texas A&M in Tempe. A little further south, the University of Arizona is hosting Oklahoma. There are three Pac-10 SEC matchups, with the SEC having the home field advantage in each. Alabama takes on Stanford, Oregon plays Florida, and California travels to Kentucky. Also, Georgia hosts Baylor, Washington is at Missouri, and Houston takes on Oklahoma State. The winners of the Super Regionals advance to next weekend's World Series Double Elimination Tournament in Oklahoma City. The Pac-10 Conference has won 23 of the 29 World Series titles. In college baseball, there's a new top dog in the USA Today ESPN Coaches Poll. Virginia had been atop the poll for five consecutive weeks, but after dropping a three-game series to North Carolina, the Cavaliers fell to third. Defending national champion South Carolina moved into first place, followed by Vanderbilt. Rounding out the top five are Texas and Florida. The NBA's MVP is denying comments about performing enhanced performance-enhancing drugs attributed to him in this month's ESPN the magazine. The Chicago Bulls' Derrick Rose was quoted in an article as saying the problem of drug use in the league is a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10. According to the magazine, Rose said, quote, It's huge, and I think we need a level playing field, where nobody has that advantage over the next person. In a statement released this week, Rose denies making the comments and says he doesn't even recall that question being asked. Rose's teammate, meanwhile, Joe Kim Noah, says he is okay with a $50,000 fine handed down by the league after he called a fan a gay slur during Game 3 of the Bulls Heat Series. The NBA released its decision hours after speaking with Noah. The fine is half of what the Lakers' Kobe Bryant was assessed for shouting the same slur toward a referee last month. And despite losing two teams this year to other conferences, the Big 12 has decided it will keep its name. This, of course, follows the Big Ten's decision to keep its name despite having 12 members. I'm Buddy Early, and this has been another Compete Sports News Brief. Log on to CompeteRadio.com for more. Today, your radio is gay. You're listening to Compete Radio. All right, what's up in the sports pop? Well, not too long ago, Kobe Bryant got in trouble for yelling a slur at a referee. Yep. And was fined $100,000 for it. Yep. Not too much longer after <laughs> that, a player uh, from the Chicago Bulls did the same thing. Naughty, naughty. Now, there's there's some discussion about this because Kobe Bryant was fined $100,000. Uh, Joaquin Noah uh, was fined $50,000. Now, some people are saying that Kobe Bryant hurled this slur at a referee who is a game official. So that might be make it more punishable. Uh, there's other peoples who who think that maybe Alfonso, you sound frustrated over this. Well, <laughs> it's does. like there's people that think it should be more consistent. That you know, if you if you give us or throw a slur at somebody, that the punishment should be the same. A slur is a slur, maybe no matter who uh, you give it to. Following on on a discussion we had a couple of weeks ago, maybe we should just take all these words that offend people. And assign the each letter a number and have Scrabble. Well, oh, Ronnie, this, you're just a dumb blonde. In this situation, <laughs> um, we're talking about the same word used by Kobe and yes. Joe Kim Noah. Um, and the league did, in fact, say it's not speculation. The league did say the reason mm-hmm. Joe Kim only got fined fifty thousand as opposed to a hundred thousand, like Kobe, is because Kobe was directing it at a game official mm-hmm. as yeah. opposed to a fan. Now, a lot of people might argue the opposite. Well, isn't it worse to yell at a fan? But in the league's mind, yeah, they don't the like that. But is the official sacrosanct. is this is messing with the actual game yeah. in some way. That's kind of what they're arguing. Who, who is it that's that's designating the fine? Uh, and, that and, is and David the, Stern, the NBA commissioner. Yeah, David Stern pretty much is like 
a dictator with the FPA. Like, you okay. know, if he decides something, there's no question in it. So he pretty much does that. So now is it him that, that determines what the amount of the fine is going to be, or is there any policy set in place? No, it's him. There's no, like, uh, let me look up my in my book and see what so fine this is. He's <laughs> he's kind of the Hitler of the NBA then. Yeah, <laughs> you said it, John. Whoa. Okay. Well, but in a way, yeah, a lot of people would agree he's with a dictator, because right? he's not yeah. He's not a real popular um He's not a consensus builder. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, he is, but he does it backwards. Well, after, um, after Joakim Noah, you know, made the slur, he apologized for it, and he actually mentioned something about he kind of got up in the game. He didn't mean to offend anybody, you know, wasn't about hurting anybody's feelings. You know, emotions were high. He got upset. He said what he said. Now, what did he say? He, he said, um, uh, F-U-U to a fan. Now, there's there's another issue here that um, a reporter uh, by the name, uh, oh, what was his name? Anyway, I can't remember this reporter's name, but he wrote an article it was for Yahoo Sports, and he mentioned that David Stern completely overlooked this opportunity to address uh, fan behavior because it was a fan that was uh, harassing him and, and That's a point led up taken. to this. You know, and it, this has been addressed in Britain. As we know, what happened with Gareth Thomas, mm -hmm. but there was an opportunity here to do it in the NBA, and and it was completely bypassed. I've, I don't know what the fan behavior was, though, to elicit any kind of uh, punishment for the fan. I mean, the fan could have just been the typical heckling fan. Hey, Joe Kim, you suck. I mean, that's that happens. Everywhere. I don't know what the oh. the athlete did. Either. I mean, yeah, he said something that you, you shouldn't say, especially as a role model to a lot of people. But at the same time, there's an issue in America called freedom of speech. And I don't know why. Not you, in professional sports leagues, there but, isn't. But why? There really isn't. But and, and in corporations, there's things you can't get away with saying in, in many businesses. So it's no. also oh. that. Am I right? Kind. You are right. <laughs> I got bleeped two weeks ago. Come well, you know what? Well, and really, just now, you can't I, say that. that. You know what? A lot of people might said. agree with you, Josh. However, when it, there's a bottom line here. The NBA is about making money, and yeah. they're trying to protect their image. And Joe Kim Noah and the other several hundred players in the NBA and the coaches and the staff of all these teams, they have to live up to the image that the NBA is trying to present. Well, and I, it's not one of players who call fans for I think it's I think it's hypocritical and inconsistent of the NBA to issue a several a multi thousand dollar fine for something someone might say when they're not consistent with it and following through with these players that are married that are screwing everybody they can. I mean, is it a role model issue or is it a policy issue or what is it? If you're supposed to be a good role model, be faithful to who you're with. Oh, Don't be I a think cheater. That, that opens a Pandora's yeah, box I'm not again. Wondering of, a game. Of, Sports, yeah, buyer, sports figure cheater. supposed to be yeah. a role model. I mean that that does open up a whole discussion of you know when does when does somebody's privacy begin? Mm -hmm. You know, and well, as a kid, do you remember like being at the grocery store and seeing your teacher? Oh my gosh, that's Mrs. Johnson. Right. She stopped at the grocery yeah. store. My yeah, yeah and <laughs> she's you know, a human they, being. <laughs> my mother and aunt both taught grade school, and there was this thing called moral turpitude. And you didn't smoke, you didn't get seen drinking or going into places that weren't nice because you could get fired. Yeah. I'm just, the only reason I'm bringing it up is because I'm curious to know what the official policy is or the reasoning as to why they're getting a fine for saying what they're saying and, and it's not consistent with the rest of their, their lifestyle. Yeah, again, I think Connie and Alfonso are right. I mean, that opens up a huge, a whole nother discussion. And I think in the context of an NBA game, that's what David Stern and the, the league commissioner's office is trying to protect. Is the Has anyone ever said the N-word at all during a game? Or oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I, I, that's actually something else that I was going to address. It, it speaks to your sportsmanship. You know, if, if you're going to go down to that level with somebody and, and use words like that, I... I but I don't know if somebody, I wouldn't say somebody maybe deserves to be fined $100,000, but they definitely deserve to be punished. That's there, a lot of money. But there are, yeah. there are Kobe. black That's people who, who use that word as a term of respect. And oh, you have Connie, to know, Connie, Connie, Connie. No, it's true. <laughs> oh, they, can, they can say that, but you can't. Well, well yeah. Uh, it, and I'm, no, I mean, it's kind of used like gay men call each other girl. Or you yeah, call me exactly. that, Alfonso, and I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, <clears throat> Raise your, your uh, girdle up just a oh, little Oh, come more. on. I'm much more re- creative with my use of words, Eric. No. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the race issue, I don't think it's safe for us to even touch that. Right. But, no. um, but, but, but the fact is that there are things, like you said, girl, hello, yeah. ladies, even yeah. that kind You know, of thing. even I could be out with Alfonso, and we could run into somebody, you know, that we want to talk smack about, and I might say, oh, did you see what that is wearing? And between me and Alfonso, you guys are keeping me busy thing. with this button. <laughs> between between Alfonso and me, that is one entirely different context. Yeah. But yeah. When you're in front of, you know, 30 million viewers, and the NBA has been really. Uh, as much as you want to call them a dictatorship, um, they have been pretty consistent with trying to promote their brand. Well, buddy, I think that. Yeah. Sorry, finish your thought. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, for example, over the last decade, you know, there was a point where David Stern decided, you know what, we need these players to clean up. So when they're on the bench, if they're not playing, they're going to wear suits. Mm-hmm. Um, this whole business of all the tattoos, they, you know, they do their best to cover those up if they are, um, you know, obviously in their Plain like uniform, you can't cover it up jersey. much. But well, from one gay guy to another, your scenario of you and Alfonso using the gay F word, mm-hmm. um, I, I disagree with you, and I, I think it's maybe a little stereotypical to assume that all gay men. I don't assume it, but if I'm out with Alfonso and it's just me and him talking, I may, and I don't know this for sure about Alfonso, but he may not take offense to me saying that. I have plenty of friends, like he said, girl. We call each other she. See, I don't like that, that either. Kind of, but that's fine for you. Yeah. But I want somebody I don't know calling me that because right. they don't know me. But I cry because and nobody calls me he. And the NBA, <laughs> you know, going back to the point I was just kind of making about the NBA and its its image and its brand, they are using these as opportunities to, um, you know, educate people, not necessarily in the NBA, because I don't think Kobe Bryant or Joe Kim Noah are homophobic. Yeah, I don't think either. They got in the heat of the moment, yeah, they said got something angry. they shouldn't, and Joe Kim Noah, even after the fine, he said, yeah, I shouldn't have said it, I'm learning from it, and we're going to move on from this point. And that's kind of what they wanted. Well, every single one of us have been in one of those moments where you've been yeah. in a, a fight or a, a, you know, a horrible situation, and you have just said something where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I, I just did that. Different. So, you know, no no one's perfect. Athletes aren't perfect. You know, even gay men are not perfect, buddy. <laughs> but without is, the punishment, it might not have an impact, though. And that's why yeah. Joe Kim and Noah's and just accepting the punishment. Branding is the big deal these days. Speaking of branding, log on to CompeteRadio.com. News, information, hot topics, and more. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. Log on to CompeteRadio.com for news, information, hot topics, and... Uh, Oh, yeah, more. I always forget about that one. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Thomas with Thomas Eye Care. Have you ever been one of those unlucky individuals with dry, irritated eyes and have been told you can't wear contacts? I'm here to tell you today there have been many breakthroughs in technology and materials paving the way to finding a more comfortable and successful contact lens for you. At Thomas Eye Care, we offer the newest technology in daily disposable lenses as well as the newest silicone material developed for comfort and moisture retention. Give me a call today to schedule an appointment and discuss if you're a candidate for this new exciting technology. Mention Compete Radio and receive a free trial lens kit to get you started after your qualifying exam. Call 602-996-9906. At 602-996-9906. Our office is located inside Lens Crafters, right next door to Target, across the street from the Paradise Valley Mall. We're open seven days a week, and walk-ins are always welcome. And most vision and medical plans are also accepted. Call 602-996-9906 today. Start taking care of those eyes. The party place to be for over 26 years is Charlie's at 7th Avenue and Camelback in the heart of Central Phoenix. There's always something going on and drink specials every day. Kick off your weekend the wet way with go-go boys and dance music on the patio with wet Fridays at 9.30 and after hours until 4 a.m. Also, wrap up your weekend on Sunday with the party on the patio starting at 3 p.m. It's Sinful Sundays with volleyball all afternoon and drink specials too hot to handle. Find us on Facebook under Charlie's Phoenix and get updates on daily specials. It's Charlie's. Charlie's going on. At InTouch Wellness Center, our team has the experience and compassion to ease your mind and take care of your specific needs. 
We are committed to the newest techniques available and are always searching for new ways to effectively care for our patients. We are excited to offer spinal decompression and look forward to sharing the most cutting edge advances with you. Say you heard us on Compete Radio and you'll receive a complimentary exam and 20 minute decompression session. Stop by our office located in Phoenix at 3431 West Thunderbird Road, Suite 9, or call 602 548 1998. You can also log on to InTouchWellnessCenter.com. Thompson Image Photography specializes in headshots, portraits, children's photography, weddings, commitment ceremonies, editorial, and lifestyle photography. Our studio is located in Paradise Valley. We offer a wide range of products from your standard prints to prints on canvas. There are two photographers at Thompson Image Photography, Don Thompson and Stephanie Hayman. We can be reached at 602-418-2262, and please visit our website, www.thompsonimage.com. Today, your radio is gay. You're listening to Compete Radio Sports Pop. And welcome back for the second half of Sports Pop. I'm Josh Fourier here with Alfonso Chavez, Buddy Early, Connie Wardman, and Eric Carlisle. What else do we have going on this week, Alfonso? There's been a lot going on this last week. I know. Um, Kyle yeah. Lums is no longer playing for George Washington University. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a matter of um, of being cleared by her doctor. Like, oh. early in March, uh, he said that he had uh, a total of eight concussions. Oh, my. So he may not that's, be cleared to play, but yeah, he is still... Good. He's still enrolled at George Washington University. Good, I'm glad. A um, couple of big congratulations. Um, one was to Steve Nash. Thank you for doing yes. that video supporting marriage equality. What's happening in Phoenix, in all states, you know, in Ari- the middle of Arizona, you know? Yeah, let's talk about that because listeners might not know what we're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking Steve about. Steve Nash, uh, earlier this past week. He's um, a basketball player, Josh. He, oh, okay. he did Is that it. with the big orange ball? Yes. Is that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Nash made a video um, that uh, a commercial that airs in New York State because they're currently having a, a same-sex marriage debate about whether to make it legal in New York State and whatnot. Right. He made a, a video in support of uh, Empire State Equality. I'm assuming that's the organization there in New York, uh, saying, you know, I support same-sex marriage. So that was really cool. Oh, yeah, nice. Apparently, he lives in New York for the summer. And he they, they have this campaign called A New Yorker for Marriage Equality. I think that's what it's okay. called. Um, so... Congratulations and thank you to uh, Steve Nash for doing that. Uh, also, congratulations to ESPN New York's Jared Max, who came out on air last week. Uh, thank you for doing that. You know, thank anybody, you for doing that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, know you for I mean? letting us know you're home, though. <laughs> well, I mean, I think somebody in a position like that. I understand. Somebody in a position where he is, you, where people just don't expect somebody to be gay to after so many years to come out and just on the air and say hey everybody I'm gay you don't know what's going to happen it's a very brave thing to do and that's in my opinion it really is and I'm so happy to see this happen that's it's very, time and that's very close to the you know sports because after all it is ESPN but I, I happen to see um, also this weekend on Dr. Drew's show a CNN anchor came out to Dr. Drew yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know his name I can, but I can't remember I can't remember he, I know his name he's but I the remember. weekend he's the weekend anchor Typically, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. His name is Doctor Drew. I don't know where. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he's no, there. But uh, the, the next, <laughs> the next one I wanted to give was to um, Evan Longoria of the Tampa Bay um, Rays. Ooh, and she's on Desperate is, Housewives too. Uh, no, Evan, Evan, that, Evan, Evan. One letter <laughs> off. Yeah. Well, he was giving an interview with a reporter while there was a practice going on. And there was practice going on behind him. A ball came flying. He turned around and caught the ball with his bare hand. Oh, my heavens. And if he didn't catch Did it, he probably would have hand? popped that reporter in the head. I, and wow. I watched that video <sighs> probably 50 times trying to see, is this fake? Yeah. And it's not. It's I caught a chocolate video. chip cookie with my mouth once. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. And the next one I wanted to say is to Charles Barkley. I love that we just go right over Eric's. Oh, <laughs> Eric's <sorry>. attempt at <laughs> comedy. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is a congratulations to Charles Barkley for for telling ESPN that why should they tell him what he's supposed to think, and that probably every player out there has played on a team with a gay player before they just didn't know it. Yeah, that's the truth. Well, I mean, that I I don't know. I I understand that you're supposed to be true to yourself. You're mm-hmm. supposed to be open and honest with you. But this whole publicly coming out on television. 
I understand the pros of doing that, and I, but I mean, I, there's also the cons of you know why do you have to let the world know that you're gay? Isn't that a intimate, personal thing that should be all about you? If it was, then nobody would do it. I mean, that's sort of like throwing your question back at you as the answer, but because it is, it's like you know when a famous person dies, why is that on the news? Well, because they're famous. You know, it, well, no, that kind of thing. no. When a famous person dies, it's because some people that really love the celebrity have that's that celebrity has become a part of their life, and that's like Josh. I Madonna. guarantee you, when Madonna dies, I'm going to be. A I, how did I know <laughs> this is where you were going? Be, I'm going to have the black veil. For me, it's Dolly Parton. I'm going to yeah. say that right now. But I think because we still we assume that unless you know they're out wearing hot pants and a. Uh, halter top waving their freak flag in the street, yeah. we assume people are heterosexual. Right. And I think that's why a lot of people in the public eye, particularly lately in the sports world, found it necessary to come out and s announce, I'm gay. And you just do it, you deal with it for a week or so, but then everybody knows going forward and you're not trying to you're talk not trying in, to hide anymore. In, in like my my partner, friend, you know, without using the he, she pronoun, you don't have to sure. do that anymore. It's just getting it out there. It's sort of like, it's out there, let's move on. And I think that's why. Did you see the, the special Becoming Chaz? That I have not seen it yet. It's no. fascinating because the one who's having the hardest time of all things is Cher. Yeah. Um, well. And it it's very poignant. It was beautifully done. And hats off to him. Um, and he, it also shows young, young children, like, I don't know, like three to five years old, who already know they're in the wrong body, and what they're doing now is getting them right to the stage of puberty and giving them drugs so puberty doesn't come on until they're about 16, and then they can be uh, put in the, the right chemical mix to get them where they need to go. I always thought it was puberty. Well, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, so the, next, the, the last thing I wanted okay. to say on that was that, uh, that the last thing he told uh, Washington Post that was really cool was that he said he'd rather have a gay guy who can play than a straight guy who can't, which I think would be a lot of people's opinion. Yeah. 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 Which you never know. Where did the whole stipulation of gay people shouldn't be in sports, where did that all come from? Is it because sports, <laughs> well, <laughs> is it cause sports are so... Stipulation. I think it's... It's more something that's just kind of been accepted or expected, yeah. you know, that why gay people are viewed as not strong and athletic to still a lot of people. And over the oh, time, I yeah. that's just it. It people was a boys' club, you know, right. that the masculine, hyper-masculine right. mentality dominated. Um, the last congratulations I wanted to give is to Oscar De La Hoya, who, according to TMZ, is going into rehab. Uh, he said that he wanted uh, people to respect his privacy, and he didn't want to say too much about it. Who's going to design his fall line? Like, you like know what? I was I actually <laughs> had a little to say on that. <laughs> it, I I did read the article, but um, the real uh, the real gold in this uh, in this um, this thing was in the comment section. On, on TMZ, uh, one person said, "Well, all the J.C. Pennies are putting Sephora's in the middle of the stores. That might make him feel better." And Sephora's a cosmetic store, mm -hmm. like where you can get makeup, hair products, stuff yeah. like that. I thought that was pretty funny. And um, another person stated, uh, "You have flaws. We already knew that, Oscar. You knocked up that bimbo Shanna Mokler chick back in the day." <laughs> Here. Now, some of us might recall that Shana Mokler actually left the Miss Universe um, organization because of their support of Carrie Prejean, who was anti-equality. So, oh. uh, we wish you the best of luck, Whoa. Oscar De La Hoya. Alfonso, and, uh, you were very generous this week. A lot of thank yous and congratulations. Yeah, yeah there is. Uh, did you have anything to say on that? On Shanna who? Oh, no, on Oscar De La Hoya going <laughs> into rehab. <laughs> no, but... Uh, exactly. It's interesting because the news story that I've read, uh, stories that I've read about that, it, it's very vague. Like, there's no mention of really yeah. what the rehab is for. And that's fine. It's, they it's, just said it's substance It's just personal abuse. business. Um, Which could be dirt. It's new know. vinyl siding, right. actually. <laughs> I mean, and it could be it could be over the counter something, yeah, you know, yeah. and so we don't want to jump to any conclusions. But yeah, they're very secretive. I about do want to say that there's a big surprise for people that like boxers in the upcoming issue that won't be out until next week. But next week, look for the new compete because there's a box boxer in there. Yeah, mm, cool. Oh, oh speaking of boxers, sorry, Manny Pacquiao, who's a congressman in the Philippines, wants to ban condoms out there. Do you know that? 
I did not. Yeah, he says that uh, people should be because reproducing. Because exactly what we need is um, Asia to be reproducing more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Really? Send your letters to. I mean, come on. There's already like three billion of them down in this corner of the world. Do they really need to be reproducing that much more? Oh, my Jesus. Okay. It's true. <laughs> I'm not saying anything controversial. Josh, China. Josh is going to. Sorry. What am I going to do? Connie, tell me. Hurry. Hurry. We have 30 gonna seconds. I'm, I'm not going to leave. Okay. I forgot to say. Okay. We didn't die last Saturday, right? Because right. the rapture didn't oh, come. Okay, right. now Hallelujah. now this guy is saying, oh my God, we don't have it's enough time. It's coming October. Now this guy is saying, yes, that, that God is being merciful. He's not going to torture us for five months, but oh. as he has always said, the final day is going to be in October. Well, the time, Dear God the has to get awfully tired of us with all mind. this foolishness. Anyway. I didn't hear any well, of that. Yeah, are you going to put your job enjoying that, enjoying that thing, aren't you, Josh? I don't know. Think about it. But in the <laughs> meantime, log on to CompeteRadio.com for news, information, Hot Topics and more. We'll be right back. Hey, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Thomas with Thomas Eye Care. Have you ever been one of those unlucky individuals with dry, irritated eyes and have been told you can't wear contacts? I'm here to tell you today there have been many breakthroughs in technology and materials paving the way to finding a more comfortable and successful contact lens for you. At Thomas Eye Care, we offer the newest technology in daily disposable lenses, as well as the newest silicone material developed for comfort and moisture retention. Give me a call today to schedule an appointment and discuss if you're a candidate for this new, exciting technology. Mention Compete Radio and receive a free trial lens kit to get you started after your qualifying exam. Call 602-996-9906. At 602-996-9906. Our office is located inside Lens Crafters, right next door to Target, across the street from the Paradise Valley Mall. We're open seven days a week, and walk-ins are always welcome. And most vision and medical plans are also accepted. Call 602-996-9906 today. Start taking care of those eyes. The party place to be for over 26 years is Charmy's at 7th Avenue and Camelback in the heart of Central Phoenix. There's always something going on and drink specials every day. Kick off your weekend the wet way with go-go boys and dance music on the patio with wet Fridays at 9.30 and after hours until 4 a.m. Also, wrap up your weekend on Sunday with the party on the patio starting at 3 p.m. It's Sinful Sundays with volleyball all afternoon and drink specials too hot to handle. Find us on Facebook under Charlie's Phoenix and get events on daily specials. It's Charlie's. At InTouch Wellness Center, our team has the experience and compassion to ease your mind and take care of your specific needs. We are committed to the newest techniques available and are always searching for new ways to effectively care for our patients. We are excited to offer spinal decompression and look forward to sharing the most cutting-edge advances with you. Say you heard us on Compete Radio and you'll receive a complimentary exam and 20-minute decompression session. Stop by our office located in Phoenix at 3431 West Thunderbird Road, Suite 9, or call 602-548-1998. You can also log on to InTouchWellnessCenter.com. Thompson Image Photography specializes in headshots, portraits, children's photography, weddings, commitment ceremonies, editorial, and lifestyle photography. Our studio is located in Paradise Valley. We offer a wide range of products from your standard prints to prints on canvas. There are two photographers at Thompson Image Photography, Don Thompson and Stephanie Hayden. We can be reached at 602-418-2262. And please visit our website, www.thompsonimage.com. Roscoe's on 7th is the only gay sports bar in Arizona. Enjoy great food and daily drink specials while watching one of our 13 screens, catching all your favorite sports action, plus the best scenery in town, if you know what I mean. Roscoe's on 7th is located just south of Highland on 7th Street. Log on to Roscoe'sOn7th.com. Roscoe's on 7th. Your sports bar. At InTouch Wellness Center, our team has the experience and compassion to ease your mind and take care of your specific needs. We are committed to the newest techniques available and are always searching for new ways to effectively care for our patients. We are excited to offer spinal decompression and look forward to sharing the most cutting-edge advances with you. 
Say you heard us on Complete Radio, and you'll receive a complimentary exam and 20-minute decompression session. Stop by our office located in Phoenix at 3431 West Thunderbird Road, Suite 9, or call 602-548-1998. And now, sports news in under three minutes with Buddy Early. I'm Buddy Early, and this is another Compete Sports News Brief. Seven-time Tour de France champion Lance Armstrong is once again battling allegations of doping. The latest round comes from former teammate Tyler Hamilton, who told CBS's 60 Minutes that Armstrong and other team leaders encouraged and took part in a doping program beginning in 1999. Hamilton said he witnessed Armstrong take the banned drug EPO and testosterone and also saw him receive a blood transfusion. Reportedly, another Armstrong teammate, George Hincapie, testified in front of a grand jury that he and Armstrong supplied each other with EPO. However, fellow team writer Vyacheslav Ekimov said he never saw Armstrong do any of the things Hamilton described. In fact, he calls Hamilton a liar and suggests he has ulterior motives. Armstrong, who has already denied the accusations, has never failed a doping test in his career. The NFL has canceled next month's Rookie Symposium in Canton, Ohio, due to the unresolved labor situation. The symposium, designed, designed to teach rookies life lessons on dealing with football, finances, and their new lifestyle, was to begin June 26th, but with the league and the Players Association at an impasse, the event will not go forward. The national champion Connecticut men's basketball program has learned it will lose two scholarships for next year due to poor academic progress rating from the NCAA. The APR measures classroom performance for every Division I student athlete and compiles a score for each team at each school. UConn's four-year rating was 893, below the NCAA minimum of 925. The program had already been docked one scholarship because of recruiting violations. Other major athletic programs penalized after the report was, was released Tuesday were Maryland, Louisville, Georgia Tech, and LSU. The American College of Sports Medicine has declared Minneapolis-St. Paul as the fittest metro area in the United States. The annual American Fitness Index is based on a number of health factors, including percentage of residents who smoke, obesity rates, percentage of people who exercise, and availability of parks and walking trails. The top five after the Twin Cities are Washington, D.C., Boston, Portland, Oregon, and Denver. Of the 50 urban areas on the list, Oklahoma City ranked last. And former Major Leaguer Gary Carter has been told by doctors that he is suffering from four very small brain tumors. The Hall of Fame catcher said in a statement that he learned of the tumors after receiving an MRI last week. The statement did not say whether the tumors were cancerous. I'm Buddy Early. This has been another Compete Sports News Brief. Log on to CompeteRadio.com for more. Today, your radio is gay. You're listening to Compete Radio. Welcome back. All right, so we have a lot to talk about, but first let me just introduce myself because no one knows who I am. I'm Josh Fourier here with Alfonso Chavez and special guest Whitney. Can I say your last name? Yes. Whitney Hanson. Thank you. She is in studio. She is the office plaza lesbian. Is that a fair way? <laughs> sure, that sounds good. Okay. We like we like to bring her in, Alfonso, right, because she, she gives us the opinion from a a lesbian point of view. Actually, is, it's a queer point of view. Yeah. What, oh. Well, what, I mean, it, I, I've got lots of opinions, and they they go all over the the road. So, know. Whitney, is it fair to say that you identify as queer or lesbian? Uh, a little bit of both. And what is the difference, just briefly? Um, <laughs> here I go with my love of labelless things. Queer seems less. Um, I, queer in itself seems less identifying, and um, I'm very comfortable with gray, you know. Okay. I'm nonlinear. Now, when you say less identifying, <laughs> is that on a, is that on a, on a basis of gender sexually, or is it just what do you mean less identifying? Um, there's a lot of things in the lesbian community and uh, in the stereotypical identity of being a lesbian that I don't personally identify with. Uh, I. Feel feel female, I mean, I go to a gynecologist. Would you ever have sex with a guy? 
I have, and it we- wasn't my cup of tea. Okay. What I now know okay. for several reasons. All right. But. Well, that answers all my questions. Okay. So, okay. So, like, I would label you just, you know, not how you label yourself, but I would label you as a lesbian. Okay. Is cool. That fair? Yeah. Like, you'd label me as a big homo, so. Yeah, yeah. A, okay. a big homo. Big homo. All right. So, there is, uh, there's this very conservative organization, anti-homo and lesbian and queer. Uh, it's rightly concerned, and it is a project of the American Family Association. They have uh, they put out a list nine ways the world has gotten even crazier. And just real briefly, I don't want to go down the list. Um, their first number one concern is what's going on with all the weather, as if we haven't had tornadoes and hurricanes for years and years and years and decades and centuries. Um, number two is the globe continues to inch ever so closer to World War Three and. Uh, that's, uh, I guess, their end of the times concern. Well, you know, one thing I just quickly wanted to mention <laughs> was that they're they're mentioning all these tornadoes that are touching down, but all these tornadoes are hitting states that are conservative, right? Well, or more socially conservative, not more liberal it's states. It's not that they're conservative. It's just there's no food in these states. It's the middle states. No one lives there. So the few that do live there are uneducated for the move. I'll, I'll well, shut up. Okay. I, I, no, I, not I'm, uneducated, I'm, but they tend to be a little more, quote, unquote, what we call conservative. Country bumpkins. Oh, well. <sighs> okay. I don't speak for anyone at the table but but myself. So. Okay, Whitney. We'll, we'll have another <laughs> session about all of that. Whitney's like, I'm leaving now. No. <laughs> okay. So number three, news from Japan continues to get worse and worse. Number four. I'm sorry, this print is so tiny. I'm I can't read it. Uh, crazy security measures at the airports. Number five, Supreme Court upheld an order uh, that mandates the release of 40,000 inmates from prisons. Number five, it's looking more likely than ever the U.S. debt ceiling is uh, not going to be raised, and we could actually see the government default on debt. Number, oh, that was number six. I don't don't know. Number five. Okay, we'll skip it. Number seven, U.S. real estate crash continues to get worse. Number eight, most Americans don't realize Europe is closer to a financial meltdown than ever before. And number nine is... You're going to die. (laughs) <laughs> Over the past couple of weeks, one of, one of the most talked about people in the world has been Harold Camping, and he was, of course, the uh, the gentleman that predicted the end of the world this past Saturday, saying, no, I, I, I was not actually wrong. I've always been saying the end of the world is going to be in five months. God has just decided not to torture us. <laughs> <laughs> it's just every time he says it, it's a different five months. <laughs> right now. Right. There was a reason for this uh, giving, um, I guess, free advertising and publicity to this absurd organization. The reason is, speaking of craziness, this has been making major headlines from Sweden. Uh, these uh, Swedish, Swedish parents are keeping a two-year-old gender's secret. Yes, Gender they are. a secret. Yes. All right. So they're both 24 years old, it says. When their baby was born, they uh, decided to keep Pop's sex a secret. Aside from a select few, those who have changed the child's diaper, nobody knows Pop's gender. If anyone inquires, Pop's Pop's parents simply say they don't disclose this information. Now, they named their kid Pop, so I'm guessing it's a guy? I don't know. Maybe they said Pop to throw you off. Uh Uh-oh. Like Pat? See, uh, see, this is exactly like a story. of. uh, I thought it was the same story, an American couple. Their third child, they're keeping the gender a secret. Now, you had emailed me a story earlier today, Whitney. Is this a different story? It is a different story. Oh, my goodness. It's, this this, it, this American family named this uh, genderless third child Storm. It, oh, this, I did hear about that. This yeah. is, we talked about that. Before. This idea of raising children this way is spreading. Now, what do you guys think about it? Because I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to be mainstream on my, my opinion here. Go go first. Go first, Alfonso. Um, I'm going to say what any of the conservatives would say about raising kids. It's not your place to tell anybody else how to raise their own children. You know, you know, it, it goes both ways. You know, you don't get to only say it about yourself. You you have to appreciate when other parents have that perspective. Now, I'm not saying I agree with with this process, um, but even in I, I forget how long ago is a couple hundred years in Europe boys were raised as girls until a certain age and then right. you know they all wore the same kind of clothes they all had long hair 
you 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 couldn't tell a boy or a girl just by looking right. at them. And then after a certain age, they would wear uh, gender quote unquote appropriate clothing. All right, Whitney. Well, see, and and I know the American family. I mean, they're hippies. They're they're very liberal. Um, yeah, I think that they probably grow their own food, but they they have a point. And on the website, all of the commentary was negative. I wanted to see one positive uh, comment, and I didn't see any. I understand that we need labels in certain uh, aspects of society for identifiers, and and I mean they should tell this child, boy or girl, this is a this can I say penis? <laughs> this is a yeah, this I is think you can. this is your equipment. Say it again. However, you. you yeah, you, you don't need to identify with it necessarily. I mean, you're you're going to have to, I think, have a certain amount of input on their biological sex. But I think it's great. They're choose they're letting these ch- children choose how they want to identify. Well, here we go. Here's a comment from uh, this this person wants to be known as Spy Seven. Um, it's very interesting to consider and very likely, and in the end, I pretty much agree that you are who you are and how you are related to it gender-wise. Nurture only tweaks the groundwork. I, um, I, you know, I think, I think it's a little weird. I think if your kid is born with a penis, you should raise your kid as a guy until the guy decides otherwise. I don't feel like I'm a guy in my body. I feel like I'm a girl, and vice versa. If your child is born you know, with either a penis or a vagina, you should raise your child accordingly until your child says, hey, I, I don't feel this way. I, I feel differently. I just think to, from the get-go, let your child decide what their gender is, is just weird. It's like... It's not a common practice. No. And it's like... and, and, and my it's, g- it's heavily idealistic. Exactly. Heavily. Hev- it's like Perhaps. idealism gone bonkers. Okay, and I <laughs> think that... You know, that's that, kind right. of how I feel about it. But. Right, right. And I think as long as there's a support system for the child, eventually I think it's kind of cool. I, I, You know, I wore boys' clothes and traipsed around. War? But see, now that... War. <laughs> that <laughs> That's extremely common. It's extremely common for boys to play with Barbies. It's extremely common Correct. for girls to, you know, want to play sports and and the tomboyish type activities. That's I mean, right. That's I, and, and and you know that's all part of of growing up and all that. But to just not acknowledge what your gender is, I don't think is healthy. I think not giving. I think it's confusing. For everyone, including us right now. You know, I'm just going to, you know, the last thing I'm going to say is what I said at the beginning. You know, it's not my place to tell another parent how to raise their kids. It is. Unless they're hurting other people. It isn't, but you're right. entitled to an opinion, which I think is is good. What do you think? Log on to our Facebook. Tell us if you uh, agree with the whole pee-pee and hoo-hoo debate. <laughs> we'll need to take a break, but we'll be right back after this. Thank you, Whitney, for joining us. No problem. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Compete Radio is brought to you in part by... The Ready Set, performing forever young, available on iTunes and Amazon. This is Compete Radio's Artist Spotlight.
That was The Ready Set, performing Young Forever. Log on to iTunes or Amazon and download your copy today. Here's a brief message from President Barack Obama. Like all of you, I was shocked and saddened by the deaths of several young people who were bullied and taunted for being gay and who ultimately took their own lives. As a parent of two daughters, it breaks my heart. It's something that just shouldn't happen in this country. As a nation, we're founded on the belief that all of us are equal and each of us deserves the freedom to pursue our own version of happiness, to make the most of our talents, to speak our minds, to not fit in, most of all, to be true to ourselves. That's the freedom that enriches all of us. That's what America is all about. And every day, it gets better. Today, your radio is gay. You're listening to Compete Radio. Welcome back. It's time for events in your neighborhood and around the world with Eric. I am so inspired today as I look around this room. He has a huge smile on his face. I do. Is there a sandwich yeah, hiding somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> there smells, was. I found it. it smells oh. bacon. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm so inspired by all, the, all those people that are either coming out or going to come out or what they're doing about being an ally. Um, you know what? Joe Kim Noah. Did I pronounce that correctly? You did. I'm did. impressed. Thank you. I wrote it down. He's actually. really not Joaquin. No, it's not. It's Joe Kim. Joe Kim. I am inspired by him. Mm-hmm. I, officially starting right now, I'm changing my name to Joe Eric. I think that is so cool. Joe Eric. Um, oh, we just got our new song. voiceover guy that did the intro for the show, and now you're changing your name. Joe Eric with the here. latest events. I love it. <laughs> my name's being pronounced correctly. Your name like is one right of the, um, yeah. um, Not Green Acres. What was that show with all the sisters? I know you're Junction. And I'm Joe Eric. I thought you were going to say it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of great events. I love this. Is, did we say it was a Memorial Day weekend yet? Not yes. yet. And you're most impressed that I know that, aren't you? <laughs> That's why yes. I think it's really cool. I'm impressed we actually get the day off. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yes, there but is, you have to take the chains with you. There's a lot happening this weekend. I guess holiday weekends are popular for yeah. different events oh, and things. Yeah. They are. Um, but before we get to that, of course, I have things to talk about. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to rush into that. Why are we Shocker. not surprised? I'm surprised that, buddy, and maybe this is going to be your news um, because I didn't pay any attention during the show. Um, so, so beat me if I'm wrong. But. Um, Pride Cup. Did we all hear about Pride Cup? What? No. About Tell Pride us Cup? about Pride Cup, Eric. Pride Cup is a new tournament hosted by the Professional Soccer League, the Columbia Crew, and they're going to host a gay and straight friendly tournament called the Pride Cup. It's the first professional sports team to host a gay tournament. I have a feeling it's going to be mostly gay. I think it's called the Pride Cup, and it has a red, white, it has a, uh, a orange, red, blue, and green uh, logo. Yeah. Actually, you know what? In rugby, there's a lot of heterosexual participation in the gay teams. That's not rugby, though. So that it? no, but I'm he he said he was assuming it's mostly going to be gay. Just because so it was called I'm, Pride Cup, I yeah. you know I'm yeah. Well, there's okay. pride fighting, and that has nothing to do. Eric's with Eric's getting game. mad. His no, smile is going fine. away. No, it's fine. <laughs> I actually want to call it the Pride. Cup I C, but we'll see what we'll see what they think about it's that. It's not related to the jockstrap queen <laughs> <laughs> pride cup. Oh, um, so we're going to quote uh, the general manager of the crew. I'm going to quote them, and I haven't done a quote on the air before, so this is the first time for me. This is an exciting new partnership and event. That's a direct quote. Don't from read the, that. Now I'm waiting to hear the gay response <laughs> to that. <laughs> Connie. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear the gay response to that. We're going to be like, hey, girl, come on out and take a look. I'm or, not really sure, but that's what I'm guessing it's going to be. I see Buddy's look. I that was a riveting <laughs> story about did the Pride Cup. Did you. you hear that from Miss Cleo or Jimmy no, the Greek? Ser- seriously, this is awesome. I think any time that you can combine, you know, just combine a community and not have to worry about who's going to be there is awesome. And part of our mission here at Compete is to unite the gay and straight communities through sports. So a big shout out to the Columbus crew and also to um, Outlook Media that's helping put this on. So you have the support of Compete Radio and Compete Compete Sports Network, so thank you. You know, I just wanted to quickly say, I think anytime somebody mentions our mission statement, we should have a bell. That's all we need is another another (laughs) Southern bell, preferably. (laughs) Maybe we can ask Joe Kim about that. Technically, Josh is a Southern Belle. He's from the Houston area. Joe Eric. So what else is going on, Eric? (laughs) (laughs) This is, you know, this is really big. Uh, Alphonse and I have both been to the exciting, um, (laughs) I forgot what it's called now, Uh Magnitude (laughs) Magnitude (laughs) Rugby. (laughs) We've both been to the exciting Magnitude Rugby (laughs) tournament in Seattle. I think you you did go to that once, didn't you, Alphonse? I I did, actually. Okay, good. good Well, this this weekend is Magnitude Weekend, which is a huge... uh, Rugby tournament in Seattle, and our friend Ben Cohen is there. So if you're yeah. out in Seattle this weekend, give a big shout-out to you. Ben. I just wanted to ask you, Eric, um, 
did you did you what what did you think from from the interview with Ben? Did we get some good information from what him. I learned is you're a controlling a control freak Josh as you interrupted me during the interview to take over he was not he, he was not going to say free this, this was, interview, say, this was say, an interview in last week's show yeah, yeah yeah I I liked him it was a great interview I just have to say I thought it was really amazing that it was compete that brought out publicly the whole reason why Ben was doing this which was yeah. the fact that his dad was murdered um, trying to stop a situation where there was bullying involved, and so Ben has since then dedicated his life to basically, um, you ending know, bullying. yeah, and in, in, in every aspect, not just in the straight community, but especially the gay community as well. So uh, I think that anybody who sees a wrong and goes to right it is. Um, I'm going to ask him if I can call him Joe Ben stuff. in the next interview. Can I ask Joe Eric since I'm a <laughs> huge volleyball yes, player? <laughs> Since I'm a huge volleyball player, and by huge I don't mean I'm I like 300 pounds, say, but I like we to play. We can let a little air out of you. Um, to tell us about a really big event going on this weekend, also in volleyball. Um, I'd love to, uh, but it's not on my calendar, Josh. So we'll get to that in a second. Or, uh, I didn't say, buddy. It. So you can know. say. What's your it. name? Um, real quick, this Thursday we're going to be at Georgie's Alibi. The compete team will be there hosting the uh, Palm Springs Cocktail Challenge at Georgie's Alibi in Palm Springs. Yay! So that's exciting. That's fun. That is. That's so Thursday. Come out and see us. Yeah, then, actually, one of the qualifiers was held here in Phoenix. Well, we're running out of time, and I know that, that I have no, no, know nothing about this tournament that Buddy's going to tell us about, so i got to get on this. Um, we also have uh, the Compete team will be in Los Angeles Pride, so come out to the Los Angeles Pride booth uh, in two weeks. Go ahead and tell them about that tournament. We'll see the we'll see tournament that's for. right in front of your face, <laughs> it's actually the <laughs> annual NAGVA Championships. Um, they're being held in Houston this year. Oh, now I see. They're being held in Houston <laughs> this year. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have Why? ever yeah, ever been out to watch a gay volleyball tournament, and obviously the NAGVA championships are the pinnacle, the best of the best. These people are freaking good. Like, I mean, they these are some good volleyball you players. Be I can't he's, even. He's gonna bleep you. Freaking? Yeah. And that's this weekend, along he's with a the, control freak, along with the right? United States Gay Open, which is a tennis that's gonna be in San Francisco. Or check out the Great Plains Rodeo in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Be- beat the Heat in Dallas with a cool. softball tournament. The Golden Bear Classic, which I know many of you are going to go t- take a look at in San Francisco. It's a big softball tournament. Then we have the Liberty Bell Classic, which is softball in Philadelphia. And we're going to wrap that up with the CNKY. I think that's the Donna Karen deal in uh, t- the Tennis Classic <laughs> in Cincinnati. And the North Star Classic Softball Tournament in Minneapolis. Lots of gay sports, lots of sports. Go out and be a big fan. One last thing I wanted to mention is there's the uh, Swim for Equality uh, pool party that's going on this weekend. Oh, in yes. oh, yes. Yeah, go to our Facebook page and click on our welcome page for details on that. Well, Eric... Thank you so much for all of your events from our neighborhood and around the world. I read them in Compete Magazine, people. Just check it out. <laughs> yes. In the meantime, and you, you can, can too. You can log on to CompeteRadio.com for news, information, hot topics, and more. Also, be sure to listen to past shows by clicking on Show Archive. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Please support our advertisers and sponsors by telling them you heard their commercial on Compete Radio. <laughs> Log on to CompeteRadio.com for news, information, hot topics, and more.